Right, good afternoon, Barcelona. So uh, my name's Kevin McDermott and I'm with Imperus. And we put together a small talk together with our colleagues at Ashling. I'd like to introduce uh, Hugh O'Keefe, stand up, take a bow, and uh, Lee Moore, the shy one in the corner. Um, we're gonna talk a little bit about virtual platforms and what they can do to help accelerate software development and help this whole community that's here before us today. So, you may have seen this slide earlier. We do like to reuse activities, as so I'll be talking about some of our reuse that we put through uh, virtual platforms. But just to talk about embedded software, um, I think some of us have made some comments about being around the industry for a while. Embedded software has always been important. Uh, we're the uh, unsung heroes behind the scenes. We always work, we're always on, and we're always available. But there's some new markets coming towards us. You've probably heard about IoT, connected car, and uh, artificial intelligence. These are broad marketing terms. I love them to bits because they mean everything, everywhere, all the time. The connection here is these now embedded devices are going to be connected. So connected embedded changes the role of software. You're able to patch in the field. This is wonderful. You can now develop your application, deploy your hardware, and then update it, improve it, enhance it. This complicates the software development slightly. There's another factor that plays into the industry here. There's a food chain that goes through the value chain of these devices. The IP provider, the chip provider, the system integrator, the box manufacturer, the service provider. All of them are gonna add value through software. So software is very important, but it costs schedule, quality, time, development. All of these are known issues that people have faced. So the quicker you start, the better. So virtual platforms are really a key to getting software developed early. In the case of RISC-5, let's start now. So we need to bring the software community together, give them a platform that they can use, and start writing the key software, port the key operating systems, hypervisors, the whole environment needs to move forward. Advantages of virtual platforms are availability can be quite fast. We have a number of platforms that already exist. Maybe they would be a good starting point. They can be used to help verify the RTL, help verify your implementations. They can help port um, hypervisors and OSs, bring up new software on platforms, help that critical first day when the chip comes back from the fab. RISC V now gives you the freedom to innovate. We've heard in a lot of the talks today, custom instructions. This is fantastic. We can now build dedicated hardware accelerators to solve a great task. Well, let's write the software to make use of those tasks quickly. So you may have seen slides like this before. And as an embedded market, the single core is well understood, and we know how to address that. We've addressed multi-core. These shared memory systems, uh, I think one of the presentations yesterday had a classic data plane and control plane processor, dedicated tasks to work together. Multi-core, collabor collaborations of clusters of cores. And then, uh, I think you know this one as well. This idea, dedicated hardware accelerators that would have different architectures running different functionality, again, sharing memory and collaborating together. So we've introduced extendable virtual platforms. These are pre-existing kits that bring together a processor, key peripherals, and a memory subsystem. This allows you to quickly start developing your software and is built on a library of over 200 processor models of various architectures. You know all the normal, normal suspects. Many, many periphery devices that you can stitch together and emulate and simulate your initial platform and they're a great starting point. If you're starting a new project, use one of these existing platforms to initially start and then gradually fine tune as your project develops. So here's a call out to the uh, Freedom Unleashed board. Uh, clearly the board has a lot of details on it. It's a very, very good and capable board. But from a programmer's view point of view, what you need is a processor and just a few key periphery. We're able to build a simulation model of this platform 
and you saw in the slides yesterday, boots in under 10 seconds, which makes it a very useful platform to help integrate and develop software. And then a call out here to Andy's. We developed a model of their N25 processor last year, and then this year we've updated it with their latest instruction extensions. And in this case, we're showing a control plane processor with an applications processor. So to talk about custom instructions, we separate the base functional model, tested, certified, approved, known good quality model, but it's in source code. So as you add in your custom instruction, there's a potential for increasing risk and disrupting the known good model. So we keep the custom instructions separate. They run very efficiently, but that allows you to stitch in the custom instructions and then experience the whole software experience. So Cerberus is a, uh, a startup in the UK, and they're working on some crypto uh, algorithms. And they gave us a couple of instructions that might be an illustration here to talk about. So this is a ChaCha20 cipher, and they gave us a couple of extensions to, to play with. So this is the technical part of the presentation. Bear with me, hope it works. So what you do is you boot Linux, 10 seconds elapse. I'm on time, Rick, don't worry about that. So you boot your Linux, you run your C application, great. Your algorithm runs correctly. You then say, let's try and run these custom instructions. So for those of you eagle-eyed in the audience, you'll notice that it didn't work. Uh, Gadge gave a couple of examples of software errors that could be incurred in a program. And uh, one of them, of course, is to run on the standard model and not use the model with the custom instructions. So here's one I prepared earlier. This is slide two. So now you boot Linux, another 10 seconds went past, you run your C code, your algorithm runs very well, now you run it in assembler with intrinsics, the custom instructions run, and voila, we now have an executable solution. Stunned silence, I love it. There's a key piece I need to point out. Uh, over here we got some benchmark numbers which shows the number of instructions that were run. And going back to Martin's uh, presentation um, uh, yesterday, is clearly running one instruction is much better than running a whole C program. So that's why those benchmark numbers change. So to talk about our partner at Ashling, they've got a great set of tools that integrates with these models. So you can do all the design flow, develop your target, develop your software, test and debug and edit on these virtual platforms. So start developing your code in a great IDE environment. And the part two, of course, is then as you transition into real hardware, as the chip comes back from fab, as you build your development boards, you can use the same tools environment to connect to the target and switch between them. So to talk about the capabilities that we have as a company, we do simulation engines, we have the models, with Ashling, we have the tools to develop the software, but we need to put this together as a complete solution by providing training, expertise, assistance. All of these pieces come together to help create what's needed in these different markets. So to sort of wrap it up, there's a risk-free approach to adding customer instructions. As you add the instructions, you innovate your software, have a virtual platform that helps you experiment and develop your software. Virtual platforms will be earlier and can help develop your RTL and they can help work downstream with your partners and ecosystem for software. And you can use these kits for ecosystem developments, early application development, and lead customer. You know, we're a great set of people here in this room. We understand all of this technology but your customer's customer will also want to write software, or even customer's customer customer. There's gonna be a flow down of software that's developed. These platforms allow that ecosystem to thrive. I'm almost on time, I'm doing well here. And so in conclusion, um, I'd like to thank you for your time and attention. Thank you. <laughs>